Good everyone, what are we going to do this video? Today we have a review on the Shackleton MR Mark II. This is a new bomber added as patch, well, part of patch 2.9 and this now is the final bomber you need to grind in order to get up to the Canberra bombers. Well, they're jet bombers, but still. This bomber, well, not only has a happy face, but unfortunately the community hasn't really received this bomber very well, for the most part. And there's a few things about this bomber that need to be known, and there's a few things that people should realise, and maybe might teach them a couple of things of just how to play this thing properly. So, the Shackleton MR Mark II comes in at rank 4, but at rank 6.0, and it does have some nasty up tiers, however, the highest I've ever had was 6-7, I've never had a 7-0 match, um, and so far the bomber has been relatively competitive. It's been able to do its job very well, however, stock, its bomb load is rather shit, but I'll cover the bomb load shortly. So the Shackleton itself is, well, it's actually a close relative of the Lincoln, because this aircraft is closely related to it. Obviously the tail section is very similar, the wings are very similar to the, to the Lincoln, and the engines are the main selling point about this aircraft, which make it a lot different, and of course the nose turret. Of course, in the Shackleton, you don't have a tail turret. You only have access to this dorsal gun up here and the front turret here. But let's go into the armament and explain what I mean about this bomber. So, as I mentioned, two 20mm auto cannons in the front with 300 rounds each. They don't have a lot of horizontal guidance. They go down quite decently by about 50 degrees, but to your left and your right, it's only about 7 and that's not very helpful, but having that negative 50 is nice if you're engaging ground targets. As for the top turret, it has pretty okay coverage, but its vertical guidance could be better in my personal opinion. As a result, your top turret is going to be doing most of the work, because you don't have a ventral turret, you don't have a tail turret. And you're going to see me use this to some extent in this battle that I'm going to be showcasing here. And it's all about learning the dead zone angles of this gun, because this gun is going to be your main point. Obviously, there's not just one gun here, there's two. There's two Hispano cannons in that turret, but I'm just saying it anyway. Um, you just need to learn where this gun goes and how effective it can be if you get the angles just right. Now, the strange thing is, is that... The Shackleton appears to be quite durable. I'm not sure why this is the case, because every single other bomber I've played seems to just fall apart, apart from the B-18, mind you. Um, but they just seem to fall apart whenever you look at them funny. The Shackleton doesn't seem to. It could take quite a beating before it goes down, but mainly its tail section is rather weak, at least in my experience. Most of the elevators and the rudders tend to go first. The tail itself doesn't actually snap off. The thing that's most likely to go first will be your wings. But it's a very good performing bomber and the engines on it allow it to climb pretty decently. We have four Rolls Royce Griffin 57As with 1960 horsepower on 100% and 2764 on WEP. You only get about 8 minutes of WEP from what I've really had um, so you'll be burning most of that off in a climb anyway. But um, just make sure to keep an eye on your web. You might just need it for later. But burn off, I'd say, three, four minutes of web in the climb, and then you can go from there. In terms of bomb loads, this is where we get into what is really the main selling point. First off, recommended turret belt is universal. Um, in this match, I'm actually using default, so just bear that in mind. But in this match, I'm using the full bomb load, which is 15 1,000 pound bombs and 8 rockets. The rockets, well, first off, I make a, I, I fat fingered a keyboard at one point in this battle, so feel free to laugh at that. But um, the RP3s are not very good against bases, but they're handy if there's only like a sliver left and you don't want to waste a 1,000. So that's at least something. Your stock bomb load is 15, well, 18 250 pound bombs. They're not great, I wish there was more of them, but still. Your next bomb load will be 25 500 pounders, which are sufficient, but they won't be getting you amazing results. 
you can kill one base and almost a second. On some maps you can kill, I believe, two, maybe three. On your 1,000 pounders, however, you can kill three of the big bases and five of the small bases. What I mean by that is on the four, the maps where there's four bases, you can kill three of those with the Shackleton. And if you're on a map like Malta, you can kill all three bases. And if, let's say in the future, they respawn or anything like that, you can kill another two of those. So the bomb load is really good. And that's what makes this bomber worthwhile. What doesn't make it worthwhile, however, is a repair cost. 35,318. That's before you put your bomb load and your belts on for the turrets. And I have to admit, this is kind of ridiculous. As you can see there, I have one free repair left, and that is going to stay that way. Um, because I have no real use for this bomber now, now that it's finished. Um, but I enjoyed it. I'm not saying it's a bad bomber, but still. So, before we go take a look at my spade table, um, there's going to be a time sum in the description below from this point on. Well, I mean, it's there from the start of the video. You can just go there if you want. I'm not forced. But um, you can now skip to the gameplay if you wish, or you can come and take a look at the table with me, and we can cover all 14 matches it took to spade this bomber. Bear in mind I use boosters for some of them. So... If you've already gone, that's good, but if you're still here, let's go take a look at the table. And now we're on my desktop. As you can see, we're, we've got, well, a full table. Thankfully, I didn't have to use two tables, because um, it took 14 matches to spade the bomber, and um, it, well, as you can see up there, I have a couple of markings to cover. The asterisk is 150% RP booster used, and the apostrophe is the 75% RP booster. I saved those two boosters specifically for this bomber just to get it going because I felt the need to not only help the bomber out a little bit more but to just speed the spade up a little bit because I really don't want to lose 35k and I know someone's going to say but Joe you have 90 odd million SL yeah but I'm a cheapskate there's your difference. So, starting us off, match number one was one air kill, zero ground kills, zero assists, didn't die, 12,573 SL, 2,642 RP, with just over half a ton of base bombing done. Battle number two was one air kill, no ground kills, no assists, didn't die, 11,379 SL, 857 RP, with just over a ton again, or half a ton I should say. Battle number three was zero air kills, zero ground kills, zero assists, did die, 3,000 SL gained and 412 RP, no base bombing achieved. Battle number four was a 150% booster match with zero air kills, three ground kills, zero assists, didn't die, 24,420 SL, 13,450 RP with just over 1.05 tons achieved. Battle number 5 was 1 air kill, however, it is a bot, so if you're one of those who calculates kill-death ratios, take that off the total, because that that's just fair that way, it's a, it's a fair assessment. 6 ground kills, 0 assists, didn't die, 10,482 SL, 1,756 RP, with just 1.16 tons achieved. Battle number 6 was 0 air kills, 6 ground kills, 0 assists, did die. 7,863 SL, 5,303 RP, with 1.15 tons achieved. Battle number 7 was 1 air kill, 0 ground kills, 0 assists, didn't die. 19,282 SL, 4,434 RP, with 1.64 tons achieved. And then we move on to battle number 8, which I believe this is the match you're seeing, if memory serves me correctly. Which it probably doesn't. <laughs> um, which was one air kill, seven. Sorry, no. I'm reading the wrong bit. I'm an absolute idiot. Um, one air battle number nine, I should say. One air kill, zero ground kills, one assist. Did die. Seventeen thousand seven hundred forty-three SL. Third, one thousand three hundred thirty-five RP with two point nine three tons achieved. 
Battle number 10 was zero ground kills. Sorry, air kills. I'm, my memory today. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. 15 ground kills, zero assists. Didn't die. 38,602 SL, 6,261 RP with 4.39 tons achieved. Battle number 11 is the one you're going to be seeing. At one air kill, seven ground kills, one assist. Didn't die. 54,685 SL. 15,131 RP with 8.55 tons achieved. Battle number 12 was 0 air kills, 12 ground kills, 0 assists, didn't die. 26,996 to sell, 6,047 RP with 2.71 achieved. Battle number 13 was 1 bot, 2 ground kills, 0 assists, didn't die, or did die, sorry, 44,451 SL. 9,259 RP with 8.51 tons achieved. And finally, the match to spade the plane, which was 0 air kills, 0 ground kills, 0 assists. Didn't die. 10,247 SL and 10,247 RP with 4.46 tons dropped. If anyone's curious about how many bases, um, I'd guess around 20 bases destroyed in total. The bomb load was really good once you got the 1000s unlocked. Sorry for my mistakes there. I've my my brain is just not working today. I'm terribly sorry. But anyway, now that that's done, we can all go on to the actual gameplay and let's go take a look. And welcome to the match. So this map is Hokkaido as it's commonly called, but it's actually called Guam if you were to look at the actual island name. So in this match, I'm obviously fully loaded with 15 1,000 pound bombs and 8 RP3 rockets. A little bit of point of note about the RP3s, they're not very useful against ground targets. I do use them against ground targets in this match, but that's not till very much later. So there's a lot to skip for this first bit, and there's a lot to skip about halfway through. So I'm going to put on... 8 times speed for you, just to speed it up a little bit. Because at the end of the day, you're here for a review, not to sit watching 25 minutes of a fucking battle. At, at least, like, if there's one thing I do like about the 25 minute match timer, it's that I don't have to fast forward and replay so much. So here you can see, there's obviously a G56 over there, and there was a G J5N1, which my A26 teammate dealt with. I'm trying to keep out the way of fighters. I'm not I'm not a bomber pilot who likes to go aggressive unless I'm playing something with front mounted pilot controlled guns. The Shackleton isn't really something I would consider doing that sort of thing, and especially with its painful repair cost. But you get my point. And as you can see in front of me, I have another teammate in a Shackleton who is currently kicking some ass over there against the bases. And my teammate in the A26 is doing his fair share of work as well. So, there is apparently a bug with the Shackleton, and I'm not sure what my airspeed isn't displaying. But, um, pretty much what the Shackleton has is apparently there's a bug. If you go past 270 MPH, um, you don't, like, the, the cockpit shakes like crazy, so that that's just an apparent bug. So at this point, I've noticed an I-225, and I believe it's the G-56 again, coming towards me. So my first instinct is, I need to get lower, I want to help them by, or help my team, by dragging them lower. And, well, the I-225 seems to know what he's doing. For the most part. Now, of course, remember this is stock Hispano belts on the turret. And at the minute, I'm actually close to ripping the wings off. It it can dive pretty well, but unfortunately, this is where he starts to get a little bit smarter. So this is where I have to play a little smarter. I start rolling the bomber and pulling it as hard as I can in the turn. Bear in mind, I am compressing like a motherfucker here. And as he tries to get around onto me... I blow his wing off. Kill number one. And that's the only kill I'm going to get this match. So after that dive fest and trying to 
escape an I-225. You're not going to outrun an I-225, but the, the point is, is that you can still fight back. Like, pe people think just because it don't have a tail gun or a bottom gun, it's useless. It isn't. It's all about knowing what to do in a certain situation. So at this moment, I was debating what to do. Should I go back up for altitude and leave myself vulnerable to a G56? Or should I descend a bit to try and get some bombs off? I went with the latter because at this moment in time, I'd rather deal with the base that's over there and any bases that potentially respawn before I cross the bridge of dealing with a G56. But thankfully for me, the Tempest on my team suicide came, well, suicide crashed into him and took him out of the match, which was rather nice. However, there is, well, first of all, in chat, I, I took a dig at the I-225 just for a little bit of friendly banter, like, don't, don't tell us it. Um, and soon enough, I'm actually going to take a dig at the sea fire in chat. Now, why the sea fire? Well, number one, he's just dive-bombed a carrier with a sea fire with bomb straps. Yeah, that that's the kind of player I'm dealing with. There's also an F2G on my team and a Hornet Mark III. I think the Hornet was spaded in this match. Not entirely sure. The F2G has taken a crit from one of the key 84s so he's not long for this world, unfortunately. So, lining up onto the base, I actually do take a hit from Flak just a few seconds ago, which damaged three of my four engines' oil systems. That's put me on a ticking time bomb. So I want to get these bombs out because it's it's, it's a heavy payload, 15-1000s is, and I kind of need to get them off. So remember, five bombs per target, and there they go. And now the base behind me there has respawned, so I'm going to swing back round and drop my next five on that. Of course, not much is going to happen past this point, so I am going to start speeding this up again, because it's going to be a couple of minutes before anything else interesting happens, because that that's just how this match is, unfortunately. So that's another five out to kill that base and in a moment I believe I start to either return to base or I start debating what to do. I dropped my remaining few bombs on the ground targets down there and I believe I'm going to go for a rocket run, I can't remember. No, here we are. I dropped one bomb on that ground target there. And in a moment, I'm going to drop four bombs on this base. Now remember, that won't kill it. But with the RP3s, it will. However, this is where you witness a bit of fat finger from me. Feel free to laugh, feel free to take the piss. I don't mind. Genuine fat finger mistake. Everyone's done it at some point. So there's a Ki-84 climbing up now, it's a Ki-84 Otsu, I'm not too worried about it, but considering our sea fire is just flying around doing nothing after dive bombing, I'm a little bit annoyed at him, so I say to him in chat, are you actually going to do something? Which is a pretty fair question, because he's a sea fire. Yes, it's an FR-47, but still. And here's where I fat finger. I don't know why I fat fingered the key at that moment, but that rocket salvo there is not enough. I need another two RP3s on that base. And as you can see in chat, Mr. Aero is calling me the noob. Bear in mind, I'm in a Shackleton, I'm top of the team, and he's dive bombed the carrier in a sea fire. I think that says more about you than it says about me. And in case anyone's curious, he is going to lose to that Ki-84. So as I'm returning to base, the 288 starts to get a little bit cocky, but... He... He, he shouldn't be so cocky. I don't kill him, but I cripple him enough and take out most of his gunners that the Hornet later is going to kill that guy. So, that's beneficial. Moving on swiftly. 
I'm going to put it on eight times speed once again. Um, at this moment in time, three of my engines are actually dying at this point. Um, the only one that isn't is engine four. So I had to get the thing on the ground as quickly as possible. Our friend in the sea fire has died at this point. The 288 was finished off by the Hornet, as I mentioned. And now we move on to the final part of my contribution to this match. And this is where I kind of do what the Shackleton was going to do in real life, and did do in real life, on the deck, could patrol on the coast, and, well, not bombing bases, this thing would have been probably bombing ships and stuff, and submarines, but close enough, I mean, we don't have submarines in War Thunder, and I'm not going near those destroyers because of the sheer amount of flak they have. I mean, I could, but I'd rather bomb the bases. So, three bases have respawned, which means all of my bombs will be used in this pass. And then the base that, obviously, I fat-fingered, um, that base will be finished off by my RP-3 rockets in a few minutes. But on the deck, although it doesn't show up here, I was doing relatively good speed for a four-engine heavy bomber. I believe this is a bug with a replay. This isn't the first time I've had that. But, still... So, I said to the Hornet, I'll try and distract them. I still had three repairs. I believe I had three left in this match. So I decided to try and help my Hornet out, because the Hornet's a very situational plane, and it kind of needs the support. I'm not saying the Hornet's a bad plane, for anyone who assumes me of doing that, it's not. It's One, it's a very situational plane, and it needs a team to support it. And I'm the only teammate he's got. And I'm a four engine heavy. So that's not particularly going to be helpful for him. But after this um, base here. We are going to be ahead on tickets. So that's going to be the positive point. I dropped my last few bombs. And prepare for a rocket run. Obviously I'm taking a lot of hits from flak here. Because there's not just the flak around the bases I have to worry about, there's also the forward airfield flak, which is currently taking a beating out of my Shackleton. But if I didn't do this, we would have lost this match, most likely. So, lining up on target with the rockets, rockets are away, and there goes the base now. And that takes me up to 8.55 tons of base bombing, which completes my bombing for this match. And that has put us ahead on tickets. However, we don't know... Well, obviously, I didn't know if the Key 84s were going to load up bombs or anything like that. So, I decided to use not just the rockets, but also the 20mm nose turret. And as you can tell, they're pretty effective. It doesn't have a lot of coverage in the nose to go left and right, but down, as I mentioned in the hangar... It's perfectly adequate. So I'm trying to get the gun on that armoured car there, but that wasn't possible, so I went for the half-track there. And I think I go for a rocket shot, but it was so poorly aimed, I kind of feel embarrassed. But I rolled a Shackleton over to use the dorsal gun. And I take out that ground target. And I still have one pair of rockets left which will get me another couple of grand kills, as well as the nose turret helping out as well. Now the Hornet over there, in case anyone's curious, he is distracting the two Key 84s. The Key 84s simply can't catch him at this moment. But, if I remember rightly, soon enough they are going to have the desired effect that they wanted. But I missed with my rocket salvo, and that ground target pretty much solidified our win. The Hornet goes down, but that is the end of the match. And even though that rocket salvo there missed by a country mile, my 20 more meters did not. And that's the end of the match. So sorry for a couple of commentary mistakes. I, I, I my brain is just not working today. It seems, but still. I hope that gives you an idea of what the Shackleton can do and gives you a clear indication of it's not a bad bomber, you just need to know what it can and can't do. And 
its effective coverage of its dorsal gun, because that is going to be your primary weapon against attackers. And as you saw against the i 5 just because he got underneath me doesn't mean I couldn't shoot him. He was in the perfect spot for me to get him. It's all about learning it. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Shackleton MR Mark II. Would I suggest playing this plane? Probably. If you're a decent bomber pilot, you'll have fun. If you're not, I'd skip this one. But anyway, I'll see you all on the next one.